the 6th of April, 1941. With hundreds of Luftwaffe fighters dropping bombs on Belgrade, Nazi Germany, under the code name Operation Retribution, starts the invasion of Yugoslavia. Hitler sees Yugoslavia as a potential threat to the southern flank of his planned attack on the Soviet Union, and wants to secure crucial supply routes for German forces in the Balkans and southeastern Europe. Nineteen German divisions supported by additional Italian, Hungarian, and Bulgarian troops conquer the country in 11 days. Following the surrender, the local partisans continue to fight against the Nazis and its allies, who terrorize the local population. Among this local population is a teenager who will become a symbol of resistance against Nazi occupation during World War II. Her name is Lepa Radic. Lepa Svetozara Radic was born on the 19th of December 1925 in the village of Gajnica, today's Bosnia-Herzegovina, then part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. She grew up in a Bosnian Serb family with strong communist roots. As a student, Lepa emphasized hard work and seriousness, and was also interested in reading advanced literature. She developed her core positions under the strong influence of her uncle, Vladeta Radic, who was involved in the labor movement. The conflict between Serbia and Austria-Hungary over Bosnia-Herzegovina provided the spark that triggered World War I. With the dissolution of the Habsburg Empire at the end of World War I in 1918, the Serb army occupied most of what became Yugoslavia. Fearing Hungarian and Italian territorial ambitions, Croat, Slovene, and Bosniak leaders agreed to the establishment of a South Slav Union under the rule of Serb monarch King Alexander Kara Djordjevic, without having developed a supra-ethnic consensus as to how the union would work. Throughout its existence, the interwar Yugoslav Union, formerly called Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, was unstable. Rent by ethnic and religious tension, and threatened by Italian, Hungarian, and Bulgarian encouragement of terrorist separatist activities along its borders, and deadlocked politically by fundamental differences between Serb and Croat leaders over its very structure. After endless deadlocked negotiations and several political assassinations, including one on the floor of the Yugoslav parliament, King Alexander lost patience and, backed by the Serb-dominated Yugoslav army and civil service, established a centralized royal dictatorship in 1929. It had been Alexander's intention, however, to restore some form of parliamentary rule and some mode of ethnic autonomy. For the next ten years, while fighting off Bulgarian terrorists organized in the internal Macedonian Revolution organization, and Croat terrorists organized in the separatist insurgents movement under Ante Pavelic, both of which were financed, supported, and sheltered by Italy, Hungary, and Bulgaria, the federal government sought a compromise with the Croat leadership on Croat autonomy. In 1934, terrorists from the internal Macedonian Revolution organization assassinated King Alexander in Marseille in France, where he had just arrived on a planned state visit. As Alexander's son and heir, Peter, was still a minor, the king's brother, Prince Paul Karadjordjevic, acted as regent. Under Paul's leadership, Serb and Croat leaders reached a tentative agreement on Croat autonomy in September 1939. The agreement left radicals on both sides dissatisfied and antagonized Bosniaks and Slovenes because it favored Croat claims to autonomy and ignored their claims. The heightened ethnic and political tension exploded into murderous violence when the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia two years later. Lepa Radic was 13 years old when on the 1st of September 1939, Germany invaded Poland and started the Second World War. The early stages of the war saw rapid German advances in Europe, with the fall of Poland, the invasion of France, and the evacuation of British forces from Dunkirk in 1940. In July of 1940, just weeks after the defeat of France, Hitler decided that Nazi Germany would attack the Soviet Union the following spring. To do so, Germany needed to secure raw materials, establish transit rights for German troops, and ensure the cooperation or participation of other European states. Thus, Germany began to persuade and pressure those European states that were sympathetic to the Nazi regime to join the Axis alliance, a military coalition led by Germany, Italy, and Japan. Nazi Germany offered economic aid to Slovakia, and it also offered military protection and Soviet territory to Romania. Hitler also warned Hungary that Germany might retract its recent support for Hungarian annexations of Czechoslovak and Romanian territory. 
When Italy failed to conquer Greece in the late autumn and winter of 1940 to 1941, Germany became more concerned about securing its southeastern flank in the Balkans. Greece's success in repulsing Italian forces allowed its ally, Great Britain, to establish a foothold in the European continent. To subdue Greece and move the British off the European mainland, Nazi Germany sought to bring Yugoslavia and Bulgaria into the Axis alliance as well. On the 25th of March 1941, Yugoslavia joined the Axis and agreed to permit transit through its territory to German troops headed for Greece. The immediate reason for the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia was the Yugoslav government's announcement that it would not honor its obligations under the agreement. The debates over signing the tripartite pact that bound the Axis partners had bitterly divided the Yugoslav federal government. Prince Paul had pushed hard for it and had prevailed. The announcement of the agreement on the 25th of March was extremely unpopular in many parts of the country, particularly in Serbia and Montenegro. On the 27th of March, Serb military officers overthrew the regency, placed the 17-year-old King Petr on the throne, and announced the previous government's decision to join the Axis. Although the new Prime Minister, Colonel Dusan Simović, sought within days to retract this statement, Hitler was furious and ordered the invasion of Yugoslavia on the evening of the 27th of March. The invasion, involving German, Italian, Hungarian, and Bulgarian military units, commenced on the 6th of April, 1941. On the 17th of April of the same year, the Yugoslav army surrendered, and the country was then occupied and partitioned by the Axis powers. While the Germans maintained tight control over the roads and towns, they did not control the remote mountainous regions. In those towering mountains, Serbian resistance forces began to emerge and were divided into two main groups, the Chetniks and the Partisans. The Chetniks were led by former Yugoslav army colonel Dragoljub Mihailovic, who served under the Yugoslav royalist government in exile. The Chetniks were united in name only and comprised various subgroups whose interests did not always align. Some were fiercely anti-German, while others at times cooperated with the occupiers. But what virtually all Chetniks did manage to agree on was their nationalist desire to ensure the survival of the Serbian population and their loyalty to the old Yugoslav monarchy. The partisans were opposed to the Chetniks, as their group was strictly communist. Their leader, Josip Broz, commonly known as Tito, was the head of the underground communist party of Yugoslavia. Under Tito, the partisans' overarching goal was to establish an independent socialist Yugoslav state by overthrowing the Axis powers. The Radic family was heavily involved in the struggle against the Axis powers. In July 1941, her father and uncles joined the partisan movement, and Lepa was a member of the League of Communist Youth of Yugoslavia. In November 1941, Lepa Radic and her family members were arrested by the Ustasha, which was a Croatian fascist, ultranationalist, and terrorist organization, and its members fiercely hated Serbs, Jews, communists, and non-Catholics. The entire family, including young Lepa, was arrested for dissident activities. After a few weeks of imprisonment, the members of the partisan party managed to free Lepa and her family. Soon after her escape, Lepa took another step in her fight against the Axis powers when she and her sister Dara officially joined the Communist Partisans. Lepa joined the 7th Partisan Company of the 2nd Regional Division and volunteered to serve on the front lines by transporting wounded soldiers on the battlefield and vulnerable civilians fleeing the Nazis and its allies. In July 1942, during a major battle between the Partisans and the Axis forces, Lepa's father and two uncles were killed and her only brother, Milan, still a child, was captured and never returned. Leba continued to help local civilians during the day and fought enemy strongholds at night. In early 1943, Nazi Germany mounted a huge offensive against the partisans to regain control over territories held by the resistance. During a period of especially fierce fighting, Lepa began evacuating civilians, the wounded, and the elderly, while at the same time removing food and livestock from the area under attack. Then, one night in February 1943, Lepa walked through deep snow, far from friendly partisan brigades, with more than 100 evacuees seeking refuge. Soon, German troops reached the frightened group's mountain shelter. Lepa fired all the ammunition she had, but it was not enough to protect either her or the helpless people in her care. She charged at the enemy and shouted, Fight, people! Don't let yourself fall into the hands of the wicked! Let them kill me! 
my death will be avenged. After they caught her, the Germans sentenced Radic to death by hanging. First, the Germans kept her in isolation and tortured her to extract information over the course of three days leading up to her execution. She refused to disclose any information about her comrades, both then and in the moments before her execution. With a noose around her neck, she cried out, Long live the Communist Party and partisans. Fight, people, for your freedom. Do not surrender to the evildoers. I will be killed, but there are those who will avenge me. In her last moments on the scaffold, the Germans offered to spare her life in return for the names of the Communist Party leaders and members in the shelter, but she refused their offer with the words, I am not a traitor of my people. Those whom you are asking about will reveal themselves when they have succeeded in wiping out all of you evildoers to the last man. Le Paradis was 17 years old when she was publicly executed on the 8th of February 1943 in Bosanska Krupa in northwestern Bosnia and Herzegovina. Lepa's bravery, however, was not forgotten. In 1951, for her role in the resistance movement against the Axis powers, she was awarded the Order of the People's Hero, the second highest military award, becoming the youngest recipient of the time. Le Paradice's unwavering courage and sacrifice made her an enduring symbol of resistance and heroism in Yugoslavia and beyond. Her legacy remains an important part of the history of the Yugoslav partisan movement and the fight against fascism during World War II. There were many tears shed for Le Paradice. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.